Hey everybody, Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. Continuing on with today's video series on the Miami condo collapse in the beautiful town of Surfside, Florida. We have a very busy video for you today. We're gonna to be going over that now famous ring video and we're going to step through it frame by frame and show you some things that you probably haven't noticed yet about the collapse. Okay, so let's play the 13 second clip real quick. And I want you to listen for the two spots where we hear the groaning noises that the building is making like Jurassic Park. Before we analyze this video, let's take a look at exactly where we are in this building. Okay, so here's where it is in the building. She was on the seventh floor right here in 711. So these are our unit numbers 10, 11, and 12. And so keep in mind, Rosie and her family were out of town that day. They were not in the unit, but the ring camera captured everything. And it's kind of interesting to point out here, folks, that most of the people we've heard the survival stories from were along this route which is interesting because it's right above where the actual collapse began and so 111 here is where we had sarah near and her two children actually one of them is 24 years old the other is 16 years old and she's the one that heard like banging noises she thought somebody was doing construction right so she is the one that went and told the guard to call 911 and her and her kids escaped when she witnessed the pool deck collapse here so up here on the sixth floor is where the, there was another lady here, Ileana Montegudo, who she heard noises that woke her up. She runs out in her living room and sees the living room cracking and she decides to take off. And then uh, right up here in 7-Eleven is where the ring camera was set up. Right here on the fourth floor patio is where Cassandra Stratton was standing. She was on the phone with her husband because she also at the same time saw the pool deck collapse and was probably talking with him for a few minutes and then that's when the building came down so unfortunately she did not survive but you can see how just seeing it in time and making the right decision to get out in time is what saved the people here that survived okay so before we continue i just wanted to show you uh, there's many ways to help the people down there in surfside from the condo collapse I'm going to put links to this down in the video description for you. So this is, you go to the town of Surfside's website, right? And you'll see this come up here about the Champlain Tower South and you click there, information and resources. And then once you get to that information and resources page, you can click on support Surfside. And this is actually the, the name of the website too. So you could actually go there directly, support Surfside. The reason why I'm directing you here is there's a lot of fraud going on right now, a lot of scams. Somebody has already stolen the identities of some of the people who died, which is just repulsive, you know, and they're, they're taking out credit in these people's names and um, all sorts of fake accounts and GoFundMe type stuff is, are being set up. So only go to these official vetted ones that I'm showing you here like this one here. So this is uh, from a consortium of people. And in fact, yesterday, Lennar donated a million dollars through this. Okay, so likewise, if you wanted to help out on GoFundMe, the best way that I recommend that you do it is you look for this page here that I'll put a link to, because it's very hard to find. And here, they've got vetted accounts here. So I would not recommend that you give money to any of the GoFundMe pages other than these that are vetted. So if somebody calls you or solicits by email or sets up a Facebook ad or anything other than these two that I just showed you here, I would not recommend that you do it. They're probably scams. Okay, so now looking here at the still photo, let me show you what the apartment is supposed to look like. Okay, so in the building, all of those 11 units, as we call them, units, unit number 11, they're floor plan C. They're right here. And so right out her window is where we think that that column was, column M10, that's right under that new planter that was added that we showed you in the other previous videos, that we showed you in the previous videos, okay? So uh, the reason why I'm showing you the first floor plan is to, to show you where they are in relation to everything, because you see the garage ramp starts here and it comes underneath, and it ends right directly underneath these units here, see? So on the first floor, this would be Sarah Nair's unit. She's the, the lady who escaped with her kids. And this one 
As you can see, this is the post for space number 14. This is the post for space number 27. And then right here, where you see the middle of the cursor is where that post would be for 27 to 28, you know, between those two spaces. And that's that post M10. So this is that column M10, the one that we think that crashed down. So now if I take that floor plan, if I bring it over here and line it up, I could see I can make all of my columns line up with the other ones here. Just a, I might be a frog here off, but you could see. All right, so I'm moving it into its final position there. See, everything's lining up. These guys are all lining up perfectly because this is the border of the building here, right? And we want to make sure all of these columns are lined up. So now let's take a look at it full size. Okay, so here we are full size. And as you can see, the ramp, the bottom of the ramp in the garage right below them is directly below the living room. See that? So that's why Sarah Nur on the first floor heard all of those banging noises that she thought were construction. What it really was was chunks of the ceiling below her falling and dropping to the floor. And all of that vibration gets picked up by all of these columns. It should be obvious that why the people on the first floor heard banging because it was directly below their unit that things were starting to fall off the ceiling. So likely the pool deck here was disintegrating. And she said she heard banging on several occasions between 12.30 and 1.10 before she went to complain to the security guard. So she comes out here, goes down the hall, goes to the lobby here and complains to the security guard. While she's here in the lobby, they look out and they see right here, these cars are starting to collapse down into the garage. And then presumably the whole pool deck at that point collapsed. And at that moment in time, her kids were already coming in to meet her and they escaped. So it's obvious that that's why they heard banging. They heard all of that stuff dropping off of there. And so if anything heavy banged on the garage floor below, if anybody was going to hear anything, it would be these guys. They were right over it. And not only that, if big heavy chunks of stuff start falling off of the ceiling and landing on the floor below, they're going to feel it in their unit because all four of these columns, and then the one down here and the one down here, all six columns in the, all six of these units in the general area of their condo unit, are going to transmit that sound and energy and everything right up to the unit so they're going to feel it okay so let's go up to the upper floor so here's your typical second through 12th floor plan and so as we look here we can tell that rosie had her ring camera right here aiming towards this way and this is that wall that she saw leaning over to the right okay and we can sort of see this column bulging out of the living room wall on the picture here. Let's go back to that. See, this is that column right here. And so this column right here, guys, is actually this column right here at the end of the ramp for s space number 14. That's what was directly in her living room wall there. Okay, so now let's step through the video. Okay, so we've played with the brightness and contrast just a little bit. There's really not a whole lot you can do with this. So this is a ring camera, and it was likely mounted on, uh, looks like a piece of furniture or something, right up against the back wall or the sliding glass door, right? And so we're looking straight at the entry. There's the double door entry into her unit. Okay, and so far everything looks okay, except... Right here, it looks to me like you have some serious lippage on these tiles. So I don't know if the floor has already started warping or, or what's going on here. And I can't tell if this guy is leaning or not, this part of the couch. It almost looks like he's moving upward. It's kind of hard to tell there. And so you can see by the time the camera turns on, which is triggered by motion sensors, there's already been some stuff that's already started to come down. Not a whole lot yet. But you can see it and some of it's popcorn but a lot of it is because the front wall of this building here is which is the exterior wall is starting to come down so let's take a look at what we've got i'm going to go frame by frame here so there's the first frame and we're going to just start looking for anything that that looks out of line now so far you see this partition wall right here for the kitchen that leads into the kitchen from the foyer it looks like it's sort of straight up, but it also looks like the upper right-hand part is starting to lean to the right. So pay attention to that guy. And then pay attention to both of these boxes here. And let's just go by one frame at a time. 
So, so far, nothing, but we're going to start to see some dust coming down. And I'm telling you, I still think this couch looks like he's up at an angle there. So right there, there's our first frame where all of a sudden it just starts coming down in force. And you can see it's capturing here that you've got the, these have bounced. So these are bouncing off of whatever this is here, this piece of furniture. And by now, the box has already moved. Let me go back to right here and let's see. This is very kludgy. Yeah, see. So let's, okay, so watch the box. Watch the box right here. Right there. And it all happened just boom, very quick, like within a 30th of a second. That's how big these frames are if we are indeed stepping through one frame at a time. So that box got jerked with whatever happened right now that just seemed to open up everything and let all of the, all of the debris start to rain down. But now keep your eye on this right here, that partition wall. You're gonna start to see it, it's moving over, it's getting warped in shape now. And I don't know why it suddenly got bright right here except maybe it got to the point where there was too much white coming down. You can see it's like a, a shower and the camera is trying to readjust. See, then it goes back again. And by now this wall you can see is, is definitely pronounced shifting. So far we don't really see anything else, but watch this. Watch what's happening in the last couple of frames. This shower of of vertical particles right now is going to start shifting over to the right which means that possibly the building is moving to the left see how it's starting to shift over to the right now as we step through the individual frames and it's really coming down thick now keep in mind this whole video actually only takes place over the course of a few seconds, you know, like maybe 10 seconds or so. But it's weird how the whole unit is just sitting here like everything's okay up until the last second that it's not okay. So as we keep going through frame by frame, this wall is really warped now. So there's a lot of pressure on going this way against everything. From forcing the box to do this, to having that wall go like that. Now you can start to see it's, the whole unit is shifting over to the left. So these cameras will operate till the minute they run out of power. Man, I really wish this one had a backup battery. So see how it's moving further to the left each time now? Each frame. And we're getting really close. I think we only have a couple of more frames. So it's not really showing us much. I don't see any big cracks opening up on the wall, unless I missed something. Maybe some of you with better eyes than me. So at this point, this is really the only thing out of the norm that I'm seeing in this lippage. So this could have been like this from contractors when they installed the tile. I just don't know. I'm surprised we don't see anything here on this wall. Now shifting back a little bit there, you can see. And that was it. So it's interesting, the only obvious thing we saw here was that wall bending and then the, the box moving. I really expected to see a lot more happening. So that says to me that these floors were, you know, pretty intact until after the camera shut off. And at first I was looking at this going, is this a crack on the wall? But I think that was just falling debris because you'll see it disappear. See right there, it's gone now. So that looks like it was only falling debris. Okay, now I've got some great news for us folks because one of our subscribers, Kenneth Lyons, took this screenshot from the original tourist video and did some real magic with it in Photoshop and was able to greatly enhance it. So now we have a much better, well-lit view of what was really going on back in that garage. Remember, this is a telephoto view, so everything gets scrunched together, so it's, it's um, 
sort of misleading. This right here is a 60 foot drive down this ramp to the pole at the bottom. This column is for parking space number 14. Okay, and then about 20 feet or so beyond it is the parking space column for 27. Okay, and that's uh, L9. And then the one that's missing should be somewhere around here. And it's the one that we think is collapsed on the floor here. And that is this between parking space 27 and 28. And that is M10. This is the pipe shooting out the water. And then I believe this one right here is for parking space 28. This is way in the back. And this one survived, you know. This one survived the actual, even the that says 28 on it. We've showed you many times in other pictures. This one survived the entire collapse of the building. So all of the debris field here seems to be around the area from parking spaces 27 through 28. Now we do see a little teeny bit right in front of the pole, possibly. I think some of this might have landed right in front of the column for space 27, but that's as close as it gets. Everything else appears to be way back in there. So this really looks a lot brighter, and I believe that that probably is the planter right there that fell down. And I believe this huge thing here is just a massive chunk of the pool deck that collapsed and it's now hanging. That's what it looks like to me. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments what your idea is of uh, what this is here. This is the sign on the front of the gate. Now, a lot of people have asked us, hey, you know, maybe these are the washing machines that fell down from the laundry room upstairs, but that doesn't make sense because these are so far in the background and for these to be this big in the picture for being probably 120 feet away, there's no way those are laundry room machines. I think it's just an optical illusion. People go, look, you can see the circles from the front of them. I, I'm just not seeing that, folks. I don't think so. And in fact, um, some of the questions that come up about this are, you know, the laundry room is right here. As you come down the ramp, it's right above the ramp on the first floor. And so, but the ramp ends right over here. So the laundry room is basically halfway down the ramp. And in order for that to have collapsed and those four or five machines to come landing on here, they would have been right here on the ramp. And there's nothing here, nor is, is there any damage or anything hanging down here, okay? Because this big beam that you see right here, I believe that's the beam at the very bottom of the ramp. So there would have been stuff all over the place in front of us here. So I don't think that is the issue there either. And I also don't think that a car ran into the column. So I get that question a lot. Did a car run into the to a column? And usually the columns win. And even in this case where these were probably weakened, if there was a car here that ran into one of these, the guy would have been dead. I don't see any car in this picture here. And it would have been, boom, that would have been the what started everything. And there's no car there. Do you see a car? I mean, I don't. So I don't think that that is the cause. Well, I did want to keep this one short, so that's pretty much all we have for tonight. But we have a lot more research to go through, and we have more photographs that are coming in every day now from the site, you know, where they're doing the excavation. So stay tuned, folks, because we have a lot more interesting stuff coming up. We find more evidence every day, and we'll see you on the next one.